Hey everybody, it has been a minute, hasn't it? Like, it, it really has. Uh, I have been neglecting this channel, sadly, uh, and so many reasons why. I mean, currently I'm living out of boxes. Uh, we are waiting to move into our new house that should happen middle of next month. So yeah, we're, you know, we're on the up and up. Things are moving. Things are going to happen. Uh, you know, we, our house, our old house that we're selling, uh, should close, uh, tomorrow actually. And so, yeah, that house is going to sell and then we'll have the money we need to buy our new house. And then that should close. Uh, yeah, better part of a month away. And so in the in-between time, I have not been doing much with this channel. And that's because I have not been spending a lot of money on records and things um, and have been just swamped time-wise, starting a new job, all the things. Anyway, without further ado, let, let's talk about this because here's what had happened. Um, the title is correct. This is a thousand dollar plus Goodwill score, uh, vinyl score of a lifetime, really, for me. I know that other people I've seen other channels where they would see records, the like of which I picked up yesterday, they would be like, eh, this is small potatoes, you know, <laughs> these guys who are like, oh, there are only three of these in existence. Like, I've seen other channels and the type of vinyl scores they do. These are like a regular person's vinyl scores. Um, so yeah, went to Goodwill with my daughter and I like, we went to the one that's closest to where our new house is going to be. And they had a ton of records and they like, normally I don't even look at Goodwill records. I don't even look, but there was a little something caught my eye and I was like, Oh, maybe, maybe. And then I started flipping through them and they were in great shape. It was incredible. Uh, you know, once in a lifetime score. I've, I've been collecting records for over 20 years and I have never in my life found a score like this. Oh, by the way, uh, just so you know, like I'm not gonna be picking these up in front of camera and showing you. I took pictures of all of them. I'm walking you through this slideshow style. Uh, the reason why is because a lot of people have complained and accurately so about the quality, the audio quality on this channel. Uh, they're like, you're going to have a channel about audio and you're going to have the audio be this crap. That's because I was recording things on my phone previously. And so, yeah, we're trying to do better, be better. Uh, and no more messing around, not having decent audio. Like we're, we're going to try and make this a, a better enterprise all around. So, uh, let me know what you think of the new format. I got bed music going of the most generic rock I could find in the YouTube audio library. So this all should be like non-content matchable should be like, thanks to everybody <laughs> who made these tracks absolutely um i am not gonna have all the descriptions because i have it on shuffle so we're gonna find out anyway enough hemming and hawing um so i'm gonna walk you through all these acquisitions and their estimated prices uh the price estimations are taken from the median price on discogs which you know can be skewed for a number of reasons like medium price is usually pretty good high price is often like what who is paying that and the low price is like what happened to that record that it sold for that cheap you know so the median price is usually pretty good uh so hopefully it's an accurate reflection of what these are worth i think a lot of them are worth a bit more than the median price just because of the insane quality like i never find quality records at goodwill but somebody this was somebody's collection like i could tell this is one person's collection or a significant chunk of it and they kept really really they took really good care of it so uh yeah that that's what it is 
Anyway, so I'm going to walk you through these acquisitions and uh, you'll see what they are. First up, Baker Gervitz Army. Wait, I misspelled Gervitz. Sorry, Gervitz. Uh, Elysian Encounter. Uh, I have one of the other Baker Gervitz Army albums. Uh, you know, this is Ginger Baker. This is, um, you know, like a rock and roll super group of the 1970s. Uh, generally not as heralded as they should have been in a lot of ways. I mean, uh, I was talking to an old guy about, about them. He saw them live. He was like, oh, they were incredible. They just, you know, needed a better lead singer in his opinion. Um, which may have been the case, but like still solid 1970s hard rock. Uh, that's an $8 record. Uh, Humble Pie Performance, Rockin' the Film Wars. So this is like live Humble Pie at the height of their powers with Peter Frampton on guitar. Uh, Peter Frampton, total legend. Uh, and so, yeah, Good Years of Humble Pie, 1971. This is $7 record. Um, you know, and, and you can see ring wear on this. You know, this is... It, some of these show their age a little bit, but a lot of them are in surprisingly good condition. Uh, yeah, this this is, you know, typical of the older. Somebody sold this for four bucks at some point. I, I tried to take that sticker off. It was, it didn't start peeling the uh, paper up, but it started to leave a residue. So I need to like get out the Goo Gone and, and do a proper job, like a, you know, hair dryer Goo Gone. Uh, make that sticker and its residue disappear um so i'm gonna have to do a job on that but yeah truth and beckola um two fantastic jeff beck albums in one nice gatefold package 17 dollar record combo right there um this is just a classic john mayall with eric clapton blues breakers from 1977 uh you know this is just classic uh, 1970s Eric Clapton. Um, some fantastic bluesy stuff on this album. $12 record. Uh, this is Gatefold as well. Uh, Jackie Lomax. I don't know anything about Jackie Lomax. I'm not going to pretend to. Is this what you want? Yeah, from that picture on the cover, absolutely. Like some of these records I just grabbed by association because of what they were tucked in with and so uh also i believe if i remember correctly this is an apple records record and so a lot of good things coming out on apple records the beatles label um back in the day you know i'm thinking especially bad finger like i love bad finger and so yeah 1969 apple records record in really great condition um oh by the way the goodwill sticker it came right off like the some goodwills have these obnoxiously huge like ridiculously hard to get off uh definitely not getting it off in one piece the rectangular ones with the barcode you know what i'm talking about if you shop goodwill I was so glad that this Goodwill did not do that with these. Um, anyway, $11 record. Uh, Los Lobos picked up some quality Los Lobos stuff. Uh, By the Light of the Moon from 1987. It's a $5 record, but uh, this copy is in really, really nice shape. Um, this one... Uh, this is the uh, when Los Lobos recorded an, an entire album of uh, Norteño music of like, uh, you know, traditional Mexican music. And it, it's a beautiful record. Um, I love the artwork. I love the title La Pistola y el Corazón uh, from 1988. It's a $17 record, and this one also is in really, really nice shape. Um, another Los Lobos, How Will the Wolf Survive from 1984. A really great album. 
Uh, but you know, not all of them are worth a ton. So this is a five dollar record, but a really good record. If uh, like if you've never heard Los Lobos, like it's kind of country fried Mexican style, um, but a lot of it's like. Uh, they take on a lot of social issues and talk about, you know, what life is really like uh, for Mexicans and Mexican Americans. Like, really cool stuff. Big fan. Anyway, uh, and this is actually, and there were a whole bunch of these tucked in. The unofficial releases, uh, <laughs> some of these are like, straight up bootleg and some of them are just like uh it's not a major label but it got released but it's you know we're gonna call it unofficial uh you know not sure how each and every one of these works but uh this one's a live album from 1989 a good year for los lobos to be playing live so it's a $17 record and a, a good find. I've never seen this record in the wild ever. Um, there's a lot of really good blues compilations in here. Um, like really old stuff too. Uh, so this is blues from the Western States, uh, 1972 compilation, a uh, $20 record. And a lot of these records, like it just reminded me of things that, you know, people in England, especially because some of these are like definitely the European presses of certain records. Um, and so like it just made me think of all the guys over in Europe who are being so heavily influenced by old school American blues. And then that's how we get the like hard rock and blues stuff, you know, like the John Mayall, Eric Clapton, blues breakers stuff. They were listening to stuff like this and then churning out what they were churning out. So um, really makes me wonder who turned all these in. Uh, but yeah, $20 record. Uh, this is another blues compilation from Southern Culture. Uh, called Bothered All the Time. Uh, this is a $12 record from 1983. Um, this one, th this record has me baffled in a lot of ways. Because when I first saw it, oh, and like, by the way, this little, ugh, man. I'm guessing this happened at Goodwill because they just had them on these wire racks. And I'm guessing that's from the wire rack at Goodwill uh, because otherwise like every other part of this record is in great shape. Uh, you know, the record itself and the sleeve uh, like were both in otherwise fantastic shape. Record's still really good. But this record was uh, a Luxembourg pressing and this is one of those unofficial releases. Um, and so you looking at this, you'd think, Oh my God, this is going to be like, you know, Miserlou and like all the other Digdale hits. Uh, no, <laughs> like it's kind of like, it's got a random assortment of like what they could get away with putting on a record at the time. Uh, so it's, it's not really his greatest hits. I wish it was. Uh, it's a 1983 record. It's a decent, decent bunch of Dick Dale uh, for $12. So uh, not doing badly there, but it did make me wish like, oh, come on. Can it be a, a better Dick Dale album? Um, this one from the Rockabilly Record Company. Uh, this is a compilation uh, from 1995. By the way, like if I were guessing when this person purchased most of their records, I'm saying late 90s, early 2000s, which like, so they were collecting records like just before I started. Like I started in like, two th like I had records in high school and stuff, but you know, I just got them from, 
you know, friends, older brothers, and they were like, yeah, he has some records tucked away. I don't think he cares about, you know, and that's how I got a few things, most of which I didn't really enjoy that much. Like, you know, Thompson Twins record, there were like two songs on there that I liked. And the rest of it, I was like, ugh. Um, you know, I had Asia's self-titled Asia, which is a fantastic album. You know, the one with Heat of the Moment. But like, you know, that, that was just a few records that I had that someone gave me. I didn't start collecting seriously till like 2002. Uh, this person would have been collecting like the latest records they have are from well no actually they do have some represses of compilations from only a few years ago but the vast majority of their records are like late 90s you know late 80s um and then early to mid 90s uh with some late 90s stuff thrown in so yeah they were collecting at an interesting time because a lot of these compilations and things was stuff that I was priced out of. Like by the time I started collecting a lot of this stuff, I just, it was outside my price range. Um, and so, yeah, this is a $23 record um, from the Rockabilly Record Company. Um, I don't know any of these songs, uh, but yeah, it's Rockabilly, it's gonna be fun. Uh, Carl Perkins, Blue Suede Shoes. This is, you can see uh, down in the lower left corner, this is a uh, hole punched copy. Uh, so, you know, not worth that much. But still, I don't have any other Carl Perkins, and this is like a greatest hit. So, you know, uh, hope it's good. You know, uh, I, I assume it is, but. Well, it's a Sun compilation, so it probably is good. Uh, this one, I I just I saw this cover and I was like, oh yeah, this is this is gonna be good. Big Sandy and his Fly Right Boys, uh, Swing and West from 1995. It's a 25 dollar record, and this one is in really really nice shape. I was really impressed with this one. Um, yeah. This is, like, there's a lot of these kind of things, like the sort of uh, primitive rock and roll, early rock and roll, uh, back when the rock had a lot of roll in it still. Um, and so this is one of those looky dooky, uh, all kinds of artists on here from the early days of rock and roll. Uh, it's a compilation from 2000s worth $15. Uh, talking trash. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to talk about this for a second. Uh, sealed records. Uh, if they are, depending on what they're sealed in, uh, you might want to get that sealant off. Because if it's that crinkly cellophane that they are sealed in and not the like heat shrink, like heat shrink. Uh, isn't gonna do it too much harm. You can, you know, leave that heat shrink on the record and it'll protect it, you know, reasonably well. You'll still want to sleeve it up. This one was in the uh, cellophane and the problem with the cellophane ones, I always take it off. Like, I always take it off. And I know some people are like, oh, but it's, you know, that's the original uh, wrapping for the record like it's been on there for years it's been protecting it no 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 uh that stuff is reactive it it you'll see like dust coming off the record that it's you know reacting taking some of the printing ink off of the record you know making things fade um and it it can have a lot of bad effects on the sleeve itself if you look down here uh, this is where, even though the rest of this record sleeve is in fantastic shape, uh, right here, it just pulled too tight because cellophane can shrink over time and uh, really do a number, especially on these corners, uh, you know, your top and bottom right, uh, because, you know, that doesn't have all the reinforcement of the spine. It's just open on this side. And so when this stuff shrinks, uh, what pays the price? 
right down here. So uh, this sleeve is otherwise fantastic, but right down here it's all warped and uh, kind of nasty looking. Um, I might be able to iron that out or something. <laughs> like I might be able to find a way to uh, straighten it out, but like never perfectly, never back to original. And so that's why I'm always taking the cellophane off, always. Um, and, and quite frankly, like if I feel good about it, if I feel like I'm able to protect the record in a sleeve that's going to take care of it, uh, I will take off the shrink wrap as well. Most of the time, uh, the cases in which I don't do that are when there are like stickers and things that I really want to preserve. Aside from that, if it's shrink wrap, I'm usually taking it off anyway. That's just a little, you know, record care nonsense. Uh, this one is in really, really nice shape. Teenage Riot. Um, I just love this cover. It's a 1988 um, old school primitivistic kind of rock and roll stuff. Uh, $15 record. And one that I'm really excited to listen to. Um, this one, there's a whole series of these. And by the way, this is another one where like, uh, the, the sleeve itself is really good, but you look over here and you can start to see some ring wear, um, on something that was otherwise sealed in the cellophane. You got to get that cellophane off. That's just me personally. Um, we don't know when this one came out. People are guessing 1980s, uh, because this is like small label that went under fairly quickly and I think if I remember correctly and so we don't know exactly when this one came out Discogs doesn't have that info maybe somebody else does but not on Discogs but it is a $22 record uh this one Instrumental Madness this is a sealed copy uh there were a few sealed copies by the way, I will be opening these sealed copies. Um, I ran out of sleeves. I ran out of outer sleeves. I'm going to pick up some more today uh, to make sure that I get these sl sleeved up because there's a lot of value here that I want to protect. And it's not, to me, it's not just the value of the records. Like once a record comes into my collection, I almost never sell it. Um, you know, I have to really not like the record for me to be like, okay, I'll part with it. Uh, because usually I'm at least trying to enjoy something on the record, find a way, you know, open my musical mind and let myself enjoy something on the record. Um, and so that's why like 99% of my collection is, you know, enter only, never leave. <laughs> so... Uh, that's why my collection is a bit unwieldy, but, you know, is what it is. It's an early 1980s compilation worth $17. Um, this one, I just love. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few, like, Norton reissues and whatnot in this collection. Um, and this is, uh, I believe, a band that was just on Norton back in the day. Um... John and the Night Riders, America's number nine surfing band. I just love that part. <laughs> We're number nine. Uh, but yeah, looks like some good surf rock uh, from the early 1990s. It's a $15 record. And this one, like so many others, the, the cover is in amazing shape. And the record inside is like barely played. So uh, really looking forward to this one. Um, oh yeah, the, I was excited when I saw this one because Escarita is, um, l like you could look at him and be like, he looks like little Richard. He taught little Richard how to play the piano. So like this, a dude who is for real, for real from back in the day, little Richard said that he taught that Escarita taught him how to play the piano. And he taught Escarita how to like do up his hair in the uh, little Richard Pompadour style. 
Um, but yeah, this is a, a pressing from 1989. You know, it's got a little damage along the spine, but you know what? I don't care. I have never seen this record in the wild and I'm very happy to have it. It's an $18 record. Um, this one, oh my God. When, this is the one that when I saw this, I was like, oh, I have to dig through these records. They've got Manor Astro Man. Are you kidding me? Uh, because Manor Astro Man, and this is, you know, the sounds of man in space with sounds. Like, this is not only a Manor Astro Man record, this is like a really, really interesting Manor Astro Man record. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, if you like garage rock, if you like really cool, really interesting, um, out there kind of garage rock, uh, yeah, this album is fantastic. It's from 1995 and it is worth $44. And I was, huh, pun intended, over the moon about getting this one. Um, here's another Man or Astro Man live transmissions from Uranus. Yes, absolutely. 1995 live album, uh, worth $30. Once again, could not be happier to get this. Um, and it's in really good shape for a dark cover like this. Um, you would expect to see like white corners and white edges. Nope. Really, really nice copy. Um, Merle Haggard, someday we'll look back. Like this was just tucked in there. Not sure if it's from the same collection, uh, cause it's not in amazing shape. Uh, but like it's a 1970s Merle Haggard record. What am I gonna do? Not pick it up? So it's a it's a nine dollar record and thank you very much. I will have me some Merle Haggard. Um oh Robert Gordon, everybody's favorite rock and roll primitivist. Uh, you know, he was doing his thing late 70s, early 80s. Um, you know, everybody knows the Robert Gordon album he did with Link Ray. That's a fantastic album, but a, just a lot of Robert Gordon. You see Robert Gordon albums out in the wild. Most of them are worth picking up and most of them like recreate beautifully the early days of rock and roll. Like, uh, he's a rock and roll primitivist who like, uh, he he does it up right like there's nothing you can say about him other than like he does it correctly if you care about the old school rock and roll sound uh well so does he and he is painstaking in his recreation of that early sound it's uh it's something that i really enjoy uh is just any amount of robert gordon uh, especially, and it's not on this album, uh, but like his cover of, uh, Red Hot, My Gal is Red Hot, Your Gal Ain't Doodly Squat. Like, I love the Robert Gordon version of that song so much. Uh, somebody put that on a cassette tape for me back in the day, and the first time I heard it, uh, blew my mind. I was like, who is this, and why is this so good? Uh, coincidentally, that same cassette tape introduced me to the cramps with Goo Goo Muck. Like, come on now. Like, who is making me these tapes now? Nobody. That's who. We need to make each other tapes. Let's make each other tapes again. Like, come on. It's like so many things that I love today were introduced to me on cassette tapes. Um, anyway, uh, this is just a fun one, uh, fun cover, cause, uh, this, like, the girl on the front reminds me of a girl that everybody wanted me to date when I was in college, um, so, yeah, uh, that takes me back, but this is, you know, Skeets McDonald's Tattooed Lady, plus 11 other Sizzlers, um, and I don't know a lot of the other people on this list, but Roy Hall, I know. Um, but yeah, Boots Gilbert, Johnny Bucket, like those are some good old rock and roll names from back in the day. And this is an $8 compilation 
from the late 80s uh, and as you can see it's in really good shape this is one I took out of the cellophane so this is wavy right here but it's not like creased or like significantly bent so I think it's I think it's gonna be okay um oh my god these ones I was so excited to get these link ray albums because not only do i have volume one of missing links i also now have volume two and volume three and so like these are like some early link ray stuff and if you don't know link ray then you are missing out on all the early guitar god business because like he was the absolute guitar god of his era anyway sorry for the slight jump uh yeah i have a few of these candy records now this one i haven't taken out of the cellophane yet but you can see like look at that edge see how that's waving oh gotta gotta get it out of there but i need to get some more record sleeves which is why i haven't taken some of these out yet um but yeah these candy records compilations like really good random uh rock and roll stuff from back in the early days and like what is going on in this picture what is this what is that party and how can i go there it looks awesome uh, so yeah, $19 compilation from the late 80s. Um, there's a bunch of these, uh, you know, blues compilations like this one. Um, I think I could be wrong because these were released a couple of times. Um, I'm pretty sure these are the 2018 re-releases. Uh, if they're not, then they're fantastic copies of the early 1980s releases i'm gonna have to you know like you gotta go look at the matrix run out and whatnot to know exactly what copy but i had a lot of records to go through so i just assumed that these are the later copies uh because i'm not assuming that they're the earlier ones which are even more valuable uh but yeah in, in any case they are in really good shape uh, this is a $15 Mississippi Delta Blues compilation. Also, sorry that they're out of order, but that's how I got them at the store. Uh, here's another one. Um, Mississippi Country Blues Volume 1. This has some Robert Johnson alternate takes, uh, which I'm very excited to get into. Uh, it's a $15 record. Um, this is kind of a generic um, blues guitar compilation from 1987, but it's got some really good stuff on it. There's some B.B. King, there's some Albert King, uh, there's there's a whole bunch of guys on here that you've heard of. I don't remember who all's on here, I just remember seeing uh, two, the two kings of the blues guitar and being like, okay, all right, there's, there's some good stuff on here. Uh, this is a six dollar record, but as you can see, it's a really clean copy. Um, this one, uh, this is uh, volume three in that Mississippi blues. Uh, this is the transition years. This is these are from the Origin Jazz Library, and um, you know, so they do some serious like early uh american recording collection and archiving and like issuing of uh compilations of the early early american music and so like yeah th this is some good stuff a uh, 19 uh record from 2017 once again there is an earlier version of this I'm assuming the later edition, I need to look at the Matrix runouts to be able to tell exactly which copy I've got, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, okay, I think this is the volume two of that previous Mississippi Blues compilation that has the similar border. Uh, this was in the cellophane and you got a little crinkle right here. Normally you get that over here, but you know, 
Uh, cellophane. It, it's not always good to keep it on. Uh, I take it off. You, you heard me talk about it. Um, but this is a $20 compilation. It's got some good stuff on there. Um, you know, Robert Johnson, Big Joe Williams uh, being the, you know, big names on there. But there's some other guys on there that it, it's going to be interesting. So looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, have some of these Yazoo compilations, um, which I believe are European pressings, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is a German pressing. Um, but yeah, from 1991, this is a $30 record of some early Mississippi Delta blues. Uh, this one, I couldn't believe that this is how they release this record because this is literally just a poorly cut photocopied sheet of paper that's like pasted onto the front of an otherwise blank record sleeve. I don't think it has anything on the back and it looks bootleggy as all get out. Um, but from what I can tell, this is exactly how they released it back in 87 from the origin jazz library like their releases got better uh but this is ojl2 so this might be the second record they ever released on that label and so um maybe that's why it's so rough i mean just the concept of this of, of this as a uh record cover is a rough idea but you know what $18 record that I got, by the way, all of the records, I should have said this at the outset, all the records at Goodwill, a buck 50. I paid a dollar 50 for each of these records. I should have said that at the outset. Here we are like half an hour in. Anyway, more records to go, uh, going up the country. This is more Mississippi Delta Blues. This is from Rounder Records. Also, that uh, 2012, that is the uh, catalog number. That is not the year that this was released. This is a 1975 compilation in really good shape. I, I looked to see if this was reissued at any point. I have not found evidence of that on discogs maybe it was maybe this is a later version i don't i haven't been able to find that um because this is exactly what the 1975 edition of this looks like and it's not like rounder records is a uh you know massive well-known label uh, so like who knows this might be the 1975 i'm guessing this is the 1975 record but it is in great shape it's a 24 dollar record um this one i got a lot of albert collins but this is uh a really really good record it's not the most expensive record that i picked up but my goodness uh albert collins robert cray and johnny copeland showdown uh yeah <laughs> A $9 record, but like a fantastic blues record. Um, here's some Paul Butterfield, Better Days from 1973. Uh, this bears all the markings of being a 1973 copy. This is what 1970s records typically look like, even if they're well taken care of. And this one has been, <coughs> excuse me, it's a gatefold. And uh, it's a really nice copy, $8 record. Um, I have two of these, the Memphis, uh, Memphis Country Blues Festival compilations on London Records. Like I was saying, these are foreign press records. And this is what, you know, people in the late 60s, early 70s were picking up and listening to. And this was their inspiration for, like, this is where Led Zeppelin comes from, is listening to this and then being like, okay, how can we do that in our own special way? You know, that's, that's how we get that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, this is a really cool, um, and, and like I say, 1968, 
that's when this came out. I haven't been able to find uh, reissues and whatnot of it, so I'm guessing original pressing and not reissue. This is not what, like, I have other records from the late 1960s. They typically do not look like this in terms of shape, but, like, I don't know. Whoever had these records took great care of them anyway, so it could be a 1968 for all I know because I haven't been able to find other pressings. Uh, but, yeah, this is a $22 compilation. Um, and here is the 1969 and 70 uh, Memphis Country Blues Festival. And um, yeah, so this one's a $10 record. And this one, you know, w with a little rough edge here and a little rough edge here, feels a little more accurate to a 1970 record. But uh, once again, got to look at those matrixes, got to, you know, dig a little deeper to find out if there were ever represses of this but um it's a ten dollar record at any rate um oh my god i love records like this um this is various artists of course uh you know uh ron haydock arch hall jr rocky roberts uh not guys that i've heard of but you can immediately tell like Okay, we've got an early Fender offset guitar over here. We've got a jazz guitar with a dog ear P90 in it. So we're talking early days of rock and roll. And uh, this is Mondo Movies music. Living only for the thrills. Here, hit songs. Uh, this one, I, <laughs> I think it says parents will be shocked but youth will understand. Oh, the youth will understand. Those parents will be shocked by this Mondo movie music. So look at it, expecting great things from that one. Um, yeah, I wish I had more of these. This is Desperate Rock and Roll, volume 12. Uh, looks like a really interesting compilation. Wish that uh, whoever's collection this was, that they had picked up more of these. But, you know, what are you going to do? A, uh, yeah, a $16 compilation. Unknown what year this came out. I'm guessing late 80s, early 90s. Um, but really good shape. This one makes me, like, I, it makes me wonder. Because this is Andre Williams' Jailbait. What? That's what you're calling your record? You're going to have it written in lipstick that your record is called Jailbait from 1984. Okay, dude. Okay. It's a $20 record. I hope it's good. <laughs> um, Texas Guitars uh, featuring the Raiders. That's, yeah. Uh, as well as several other uh, groups on here. It's a 1984 compilation, $10 compilation, but, you know, uh, I, I, I like to think that this is going to be the early predecessors to your ZZ Top type hot Texas blues. So, uh, high hopes on that one. Uh, this one, and I really, this is one I've really, really got to get the cellophane off of, but I didn't take it off because I ran out of record sleeves. And so, you know, you can already see that this is impacting the cover. Hopefully there's not going to be any peel when I take this off. I don't think there's going to be, but you never know with because this is the crinkly crinkle cellophane. Um, but if you don't know Plan 9 from Outer Space, it's the legendary worst movie ever made. What's the soundtrack like? I have no idea. I've seen this film a few times. This is one of my brother's favorites. And I, I couldn't tell you what the actual soundtrack is like, even though I've seen this a few times. It's a $15 record, but like immediately as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, must have, must have. I don't care what it's worth. It's going into my collection. It's never going out. Love it. Uh, these ones, I actually looked them up because I was like, this just looks like a compilation of like 
foot stomp and primitive rock and roll that I could really get behind because I, I didn't know Gaiety Records, never heard of them, you know, but this is a Norton compilation of, you know, all the things from an early, you know, late 1950s, early 1960s uh, record label that was, you know, just grabbing guys hot out of the garage and uh, giving them a, a can to sing into and, uh, you know, cutting 45s and whatnot. So this is a $10 compilation from 1994 and boom, I also have volume two and I listened to volume two last night and loved it. Like loved it. <laughs> it is exactly the kind of foot stomping early rock and roll nonsense that I am all about. And look at these guitars. I mean, this looks like a Fender or possibly a knockoff, but like, what are we rocking here? Tysco's? What's this? This has got to be some early Japanese lipstick pickup monster. Like, love it. Love it. And look at this guy. He's, he's playing traditional grip. He's not playing match grip. Like, uh, good years of rock and roll. Anyway, here's another one. When you, when you just see guys in matching jackets, you know, you see a jazz guitar with a dog ear P90. You see a guy with a saxophone, you know that compilation is going to be some good primitive stuff. Bison Bop, strictly instrumental from 2002, a $9 record, but as you can see, like really nice copy and uh, very excited about this. Sonny Boy Williamson and the Yardbirds. Um, I've been looking at this another one where I'm like, is this the original or is this a repress? I can't find a repress. I'm guessing it like I'm guessing it is, but like I'm not seeing it and it's in really, really nice shape. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to we're going to dig a little deeper on this one. But like this is like, uh, man, when all of these British bands that were inspired by um, early American blues started coming over and playing with these blues legends. Like a lot of those, like not all of them, like some of the London Howlin' Wolf sessions were a little like, come on boys, pick it up. And you hear like Howlin' Wolf trying to teach the guys like, here's how to play the blues, stupid, you know? And so like not all of those not all of these are amazing but like this one sunny boy williamson and the yardbirds really really nice one uh super clean copy 30 dollar record um ooh here's a fun compilation link rays jack the ripper 1990 compilation it's a 20 dollar record this another one uh these are the 1964 swan demos uh, so it's an early, it's got an early demo of the rumble, uh, which is, you know, I'm looking forward to that. It's a $21 record and it's in really, really clean shape. Um, here's another candy records compilation too much going on from 1988, a $16 record full of, you know, what I hope is some hot early rock and roll business. Um, Marty Robbins just had to pick this one up because I love Marty Robbins. Um, just me and my guitar, a $7 record, but you know, uh, I, I grew up on the later Marty Robbins, you know, your, uh, everything from, uh, gunfighter ballads onward, you know, up to like El Paso City by the Rio Grande, he the follow-up to El Paso, his classic hit. Anyway, regardless, like well steeped in the Marty Robbins, love the man, love his music. And so had to pick that one up. This one I have got to like, I, I've got to protect this record. I got to come up with something. Uh, I think I'm going to do like, I've seen a lot of guys do for their, um, cause someone showed how they protect records that come in those uh pvc the heavy pvc sleeves that over time a lot of picture discs come that way and uh over time they 
bind to the record, they stick to it and they peel off portions of the picture disc. No bueno. Like, so uh, you got to get them out of there and like really protect and put them in a paper sleeve. And then what they do is they take a piece of cardboard and insert it into the outer jacket to like, but this is like just a photocopied piece of paper folded in half from 1987. So like, I, I got to protect this because, uh, this is a rare record and who cares? It's only worth $20, whatever. But like Mexican rock and roll from back in the day, like get out of town. I'm very excited about this and I will protect this record. Like you can trust that I'm taking good care of this one because um, I'm going to come up with something with some cardboard solution or maybe a plastic solution um, to just make sure that this stays nice. Um, oh my God, this might be the pick of the entire, entire record roundup that I'm doing right now. Um, Esquivel, Space Age Bachelor Pad music. If you've never heard his music, it's exact. It's exactly that Space Age Bachelor Pad music. Um, this is the 1994 release. So these were released before I started collecting records. And by the time I realized that I should have had this in my collection, I was completely priced out of it. And then it has only gotten worse. <laughs> so like these have only shot up in value so yeah so i could not grab this fast enough it's a 50 dollars record but more importantly like it's a really really unique sounding record of there's just no one like this guy nobody uh the first time you hear it you might be like oh that's kind of cheesy i don't know if i dig this at all uh, you know, but it does not take long before you're like, uh, this guy might be my new dad. Like, this is amazing. Um, so yeah, all about that Esquivel. Uh, this one is a sealed copy of Blue Demon's Mexican rock and roll favorites. Whoever's collection this was, dude, excellent taste. First of all, excellent taste. Just know if the person who gave these up has ever seen this, your babies are going to be well taken care of. But yeah, you, you're going to show me a record cover with guys in luchador masks uh, playing, you know, like squonky offset Japanese garage rock guitars. Yeah, I'm buying that record. I'm buying that record 100% of the time. And yeah. I'm going to take care of this. I will break the seal because like you can see, because this is cellophane, you can see how it's starting to get a little ring wear on the edge. Like we got to get that cellophane off of there. And more importantly, I got to listen to this. I'm excited to have it. Here's some more Albert Collins. There, I think this is, we're getting into the main portion of the Albert Collins. So we're going to flip through these pretty quickly you're going to see a whole bunch of Albert Collins, but like, if you've never heard this guy, just absolutely face shredding blues guitar licks. Um, this is the alligator record sound. Uh, Albert Collins is the guy who made it what it is. Alligator records, fantastic blues label. Uh, nine times out of ten, if you pick something up that's on Alligator Records, you're probably going to love it. Uh, but yeah, here we got Live in Japan. Um, then we've got Don't Lose Your Cool. Uh, we've got Frozen Alive. You can see that these are all still in the wrap. Um, I'm going to get those wrappers off of there, get them in some proper sleeves. But like, yeah, still in great shape. Um, ice picking this record is hot. This is a hot blues record. And of course, like, I just love he's plugged into this ice block and he's just melting it down with his hot blues. Like, how are you going to not love this record? Um, Frostbite, like Albert Collins, say what you will 
about the man and if what you will say about him is not that he's fantastic and that you love him I don't know what you're doing but like he had some great album art um, this one I didn't know anything about but I listened to about half of this record last night it's all kinds of stuff it's like reggae and R&B and garage rock and like it's just an eclectic mix and um this was uh it was produced by um oh what's his name brick <laughs> hold up no jackson brown jackson brown because this guy played with like jackson brown and linda ronstadt and people like that back in the day and that's how he got his own record deal and once he got his own record deal, he was like, well, let's go nutso bananas. And this thing is like so eclectic, but you can see like really clean copy and a $10 record, but like I already enjoy it much more than $10 worth. Here's a sealed copy of John Lennon's Live in New York City. Uh, from 1986, a $25 record. Um, even though this is like, cause you can see usually when you get the, uh, the little hole in it like that, that is intentional part of the packaging. Uh, what that means is that this is not the crinkly cellophane. This is heat shrink. I'm still going to bust this thing open because I'm excited to have it and I want to listen to it. Um, <laughs> when I saw this one, I was like, James Patrick Page, who's that? And I realized like, oh, it's Jimmy Page. I wish I had volume one of this as well, but this is Jimmy Page's work as a session musician um, with a whole bunch of other people like from his early days, like Yardbirds days and whatnot. Um, it's a $16 record, but like, I'm excited about this one. This one's gonna be interesting. Um, and then bringing it home, I think we're into the last two records. We've got the Mothers of Invention, Reuben and the Jets, night from 1968. Uh, this is a $20 record, and yeah, this is some Frank Zappa goodness from back in the day. And then last and certainly not least, um, the Mothers of Invention were only in it for the money. Now, this is a hole punch copy, but I rarely see Frank Zappa albums in this like because the actual uh in, in this kind of condition the actual record on the inside is fantastic shape like it's really really nice and the rest of this jacket I mean aside from some wear along the spine is really really nice this is a gatefold copy and um yeah so I, I'm saying that the $30 value, even though it's a whole punch copy, um, I'm saying that's probably pretty fair because of how nice this copy is. Anyway, here's a rundown. Uh, I picked up 69 records, <laughs> 69. Um, I bought them for a buck 49 each uh, for a total of $102.81 that I spent. Um, the Discogs value, the median value is, if you total it all up, is $1,148. Uh, but it, like, given how clean so many of these records are, it's probably more than that. So like, I spent a little over $100 to get over $1,000 in record value. Average record value is over $16. So like... Look, I know that I wasn't uncovering like, you know, oh, there's only two of these in existence, man, and it's worth a thousand dollars. Like, yes, we know there are records like that in existence. We know that people sometimes come across that at Goodwill. But I'm telling you, in my life, in my record collecting life, I have never, ever hit a score like this. I mean, just look, just look just look just look at what i picked up just look does this look like a hundred dollars worth of records to you wait that's not records but like 
A hundred dollars? Are you kidding me? Like, this chunk of records, I, I have, you know, the same record shelving that a lot of you have, which is, you know, that Ikea Kallax stuff. This fills, like, all of these records, they fill a, a, a square in a Kallax shelf. So one entire square full of uh, filling a Kallax uh, record shelf for a hundred bucks, but the records inside it are worth over a thousand. Yes, please. Um, anyway, I'm not posting this to gloat. Like I'm not posting this to be like, Oh, I'm the most amazing. <laughs> like I'm posting this cause I'm so freaking excited. Like I, never get scores like this. Like I will find individual records that I get super excited about. Like, you know, I have a foil stamp promo copy of uh, Jellyfish's belly button. Like I've been searching my whole life for, a, for any Jellyfish record, you know, and to find like a foil stamp promo copy of that in decent shape, like I was so excited. But that was one record, you know, this is 69 records and every single one of them, when I grabbed it, I was like, oh, I bet this is going to be awesome. So yeah, I'm just literally over the moon about this. Anyway, if you made it through this hour long record haul, congratulations to you. Um, uh, yeah, this is just the best record haul of my entire life and hopefully hopefully uh some of y'all out there you know y you go off and find your own massive record haul like everybody everybody who collects records deserves something like this at least once and uh yeah this one's mine i'm perfectly happy with it i couldn't have been more excited so Anyway, people, that's going to do it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Don't know when it's going to be, but when I get into my new house, there's going to be a lot more music content on this channel. We'll revive it. We'll get it going again. Anyway, but thanks for being here for this one, people. I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Bye.